with ideas. You would bless them with creativity. You would bless them, oh God, with a, a, a tenacity that would never give up. You would bless them with health. Three, beginning in verses one, would you read it with me? How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in what? Unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head running down, on the beard running down, on Aaron's beard down to the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Look at it if you would, as I stand behind these amazing children. We've been teaching for the last several weeks that there's something so wonderful that happens when people come together in unity. When a nation comes together in unity, how many of you know that nation can accomplish things? When an athletic group comes together, we've got uh, Coach uh, Matt Seymour from Faith Academy here this morning. Would you wave, Matt? And uh, when he knows that when, he, he was like, don't recognize me, but Matt, he's, he's the little guy, whole chain of real high. That, that, there you go, all right. He understands in an athletic group that if, when an athletic group comes together, so in unity, something unusual can happen. When a church comes together in unity, something unusual can happen. See, the enemy's plan is for us to be offended or be divided over different issues. But look at me now. I want to teach this very, very quickly. Here's what the psalmist was trying to teach us. He said, it will be as if the dew falling from Mount Hermon will fall on Mount Zion. If you know the geography of that, they're 200 miles away. What he was saying was, it's impossible for the dew of Hermon to fall on Mount Zion, it will never happen. He said, it'll be like the oil running out of Aaron's beard even to the ground. And that only happens once a year in the celebration of God's priesthood. And here's what the psalmist was trying to communicate. Unity is so priceless and so difficult, it might only happen once a year, and it could never happen. Come on, guys. And when a body of believers come together, united as one in faith in God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, when we come together in one, young and old, there's something unusual that is going to happen because God says, in that place, I'm going to bestow a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you look at the person next to you and just say, I love, 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 love you. Would you just tell them right now, just tell them I love you. Now, I'm going to be honest, and I don't want anybody to raise their hand, but some of these people you just look at are hard to love. Don't say anything. Some of these are hard to love. But do you know what? Jesus said this, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you will show love one for another. Amen. And when we come together in unity, it's so hard, and it only happens once a year, or it may never happen. So here's what he's trying to say to us, is that God wants us <laughs> to walk in unity. Uh, John David, would you come here real quick and help me real quick? And uh, John's been my uh, helper these last couple of weeks. And uh, he's 17 now, so everybody thought him on his ear 17 times today. If you would, on the way out of the sanctuary, he appreciates that. I've asked him to come and help me, and we'll stand way over here if I can, and we'll just try to get this light. We've got a, a lighting issue here. I, I've asked him to hold this. Now, some of you might not be able to see it, but just hang with me. This is a wonderful church. You, this is, we have a wonderful pastor. <laughs> Church. We do so many wonderful things and so many different wonderful ways for so many different people. And we do all those things because of what God's called this house to accomplish. But it is far beneath what God has called us to do. And we're an excellent church in outreach. We're an excellent church in teaching. We're an excellent church in uh, ministry for the family. We're excellent in every area but one. And it's in the area of giving. And God spoke to me several weeks ago and he said this. I want to take the lid off of the giving of this house. I want to take the lid off. Now, let me tell you how that's going to happen. That's going to happen when there's 100% tithe giving, offering giving people in the house of God. Because see, when we come together in unity, he says this. He says, I'll command the blessing there. That's what he'll do. So here's the thing. As all of us together come into the Lord, and listen, if every one of us are paying tithes and offerings to the Lord, can I tell you this? There will be. Never, ever be a need in this house. There will never, ever be a need in this house. Say that. There will never, ever be a need in this house. So I want you to know, God said, I want to take the lid off. Let me tell you what we're trying to do. We're trying to repair this building. 
We're trying to build new buildings. We're believing God for the expansion of the television and radio. We're believing God for expansion of staff. There are so many things that God wants us to do, but it cannot happen without the faithful giving of God's people. So unity. Everybody shout that. Unity. Oh, come on, shout it. Come on. Unity. unity. Ushers, would you come? I'm going to ask everyone to take an offering envelope out now. Thank you, John David. I appreciate your help. Um, we're going to ask you to help us take the lid off today. And then these children who have been so patient, standing here so wonderful, are going to minister to our mothers and our church. I'm going to ask you to give your tithe, because if you're not giving your tithe, the window of heaven is shut in your life. God wants you to win. He wants his favor in your life. But you're going to have to give to the Lord to get that window open. Then I'm asking you to give offerings to the building. I'm believing for endowments. Everybody say endowments. I'm just believing people are going to give large sums of money to this church. That the favor of the Lord will be on you so supernaturally that you'll just write large gifts to this house. That God will trust you with gold in your hands and then you'll give it to the house of God for meetings. That's why God does it. So I need you to believe and prophesy with me in Dallas. There's only one thing this church needs to be a supernatural success far beyond what it's already accomplished. And it's this. More, actually, two things. More volunteers and more money. And we're believing that God's people, so many of this church, are not tithing. I'm going to ask you to be a tither. And let the window of heaven be open over your life. And let's get an unity over this. Father, today we thank you for these children. We thank you for this house. We thank you for our mothers. We bless them today. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful offering among your people. And we ask now, God, that as we trust you to be obedient, to give our tithe. We thank you for endowments. We thank you for a 100% buy-in in this house. That there's 100% of the people of this house who give tithes, offerings, and alms. And that we will be a people who trust you, bless you, and that we see an open heaven over your people because we're obedient in giving. Bless the finances of this house. Expand our territory, we pray. And more fulfill the vision. And if you agree with me, would you say amen? amen. As you place your offering in the basket, would you listen to our wonderful children? Can you give them a great, 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 great hail? God bless your children. this out loud. Come on. I want you to know that I'm committed to you. 
You'll never knowingly suffer at my hands. I'll never say or do anything knowingly to hurt you. I'll always, in every circumstance, seek to help you and support you. If you're down, I can lift you up. I'll do that. Anything I have that you need, I'll share with you. And if need be, I'll give it to you. No matter what I find out about you, and no matter what happens in the future, either good or bad, my commitment to you will never change. And there's nothing you can do about it. You don't have to respond. I love you. Come on. And that's what it means. Boy, I hope you mean that today. We can each other. God bless you. You can be seated. Would you open your Bibles with me now to the book of Oh, my God. 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 O